In this video, we will look at Punch Tool. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a new video is released. In this video, we will examine Punch Tool. We've gone through videos explaining the programming language for the Amata turret punch press machines, but let's concentrate with the actual tools that are put in the turret. First thing to remember is that the tooling should be designed for the machine and not the machine for the tooling. The tools are consumables that we put in the machine, therefore the quality and design of the tooling will affect the result of the punch parts, but more importantly, the life of the machine itself. Follow the machine manufacturer's recommendations with regards to tooling for best punching results and maximum machine life. We have seen machines punching almost 24 hours a day for over 30 years and the machines are still punching parts within tolerance. We have also seen machines that were punching parts out of tolerance just after 5 years. The difference is proper preventive maintenance and the quality of the tooling used. There are many tooling suppliers, but unfortunately, the tooling they supply may not be necessarily designed specifically for Amata turrets. If you are not careful, you can cause premature wear and damage to your machine in the long term by using tooling out of the manufacturer's machine specifications. So we know by now that tooling consists of two parts, the punch and the die. The striker applies a force to the punch which descends on the material. As it continues to descend, it pierces the material by pushing a slug through the die, unless it is a forming tool, in which case it does not necessarily punch through the material, but deforms it. The most important factor in tooling when punching is the die clearance. The die clearance is the difference between the punch dimensions and the die dimensions. For example, when a 0.25 inch round punch is used with a 0.258 inch die, there is a 0.008 inch clearance. When selecting the die clearance, we have to consider that the die clearance affects the tool life, tonnage requirements, and the burr on our parts. If the selected clearance is too tight, you will have increased tool wear, possible tool breakage, and will increase the required tonnage to punch a hole. If the die clearance is too big, you will have increased burr, slug pulling, machine shavings, and poor quality holes. Choosing the proper die clearance for punching holes will depend on the material's shear strength and the thickness of the material. Verify with your tooling supplier for the recommended die clearance of the particular material you are punching. As you can see in these sample charts, as a general rule, the greater the shear strength, the more clearance is required. In the case where you are blanking parts, in other words, the slug is the actual part we keep, then the die clearance should be reversed. So if we want the slug to be 0.750 inch round and want to use a 0.008 clearance, we would apply the clearance to the punch. The punch would be 0.742 inch diameter, and the die would be 0.750 diameter. The result would be that the slug produced would have a 0.75 inch diameter. As mentioned previously, the die clearance affects the tonnage required to punch through the material. Let's look at how to calculate the tonnage required for a specific punch. The formula is simple. For inch calculation, Multiply the perimeter of the punch by the thickness of the material, both in inches, then multiply by 25, and finally multiply by the material multiplier. The result is in US tons. The material multiplier takes into account the shear strength of each material. For metric calculation, multiply the perimeter of the punch by the thickness of the material, both in millimeters, then multiply by 0.0352 and finally multiply by the material multiplier. The result is in metric tons. 
Let's say you have a 0.5 inch square that will be used with correct clearances on 0.059 inch cold roll steel material. The perimeter would be 2 inches multiplied by the thickness 0.059 inch and then multiplied by the material multiplier 25. The result would be 2.95 US tons. As a general rule, it is not recommended to use a punch that will go over 80% of the machine's tonnage capacity. You can see a list of shapes and formulas to easily calculate the perimeter of each. On the same chart, you can also see formulas to calculate the diagonal of each shape. This is useful to determine which station size a tool can fit in. As we discussed in an earlier video, there are different station sizes in the turret and this chart specifies the maximum diagonal a punch can be to fit in each station. So for example, for a 1 inch square punch, or 25.4 mm square punch, the diagonal would be 1.414 inches or 35.9156 mm. This means the smallest station it could fit in would be a C station. Now let's look at general tips to make sure the tooling does not wear out prematurely and that we get the best results when punching. When punching small or narrow holes, the minimum diameter or width should not be less than the material thickness. For harder materials such as stainless steel, the minimum dimension should not be smaller than two times the material thickness. When punching holes close to each other, Make sure you have a minimum of two times the material thickness between holes. If punching close to the edge of the material, make sure the hole is at least two and a half times the material thickness from the edge of the sheet. If you are punching a large number of holes on a sheet, you may experience material warping on a grid of holes, for example. This is caused by the compression of material surrounding the holes. One way to help reduce this effect is to punch every other hole moving in one direction and then go back and punch the remaining holes. Usually all punches are flat, but with larger stations like D or E stations, shear angles are sometimes used. The advantage of having a shear angle is that there is a reduction of tonnage required to punch the hole, since the hole is not hitting with a full face on the material. This also reduces noise and helps slug extraction. The disadvantage on newer machines is that tooling with shear angles requires the punch to travel deeper into the material to complete the hole. This means a longer stroke with each hit and also results in a longer punching time. Rooftop punches are not recommended when punching notches. When notching, the convex geometry of the punch may push the punch away from the material and this may not produce the desired results. Now let's talk about punch and die maintenance. As a punch and die is used, tiny cracks start occurring on the cutting edges. With time, a radius will start forming on the edges. When this radius is about 0.005 inches, it is time to sharpen the tool. Remove the 0.005 inch radius to restore the sharp edges. Make sure a coolant is used when grinding so as to not change the properties of the material. It is better to grind small amounts but more often than to grind big amounts but less often. The total life of the tool will be prolonged when keeping it sharp by removing small amounts at a time. If you have an automatic tool grinder such as the Amata Togo, you can refresh each tool every time you remove it from the turret by grinding off one or two thousandths of an inch. This will make sure the tooling is sharp every time it is needed and will keep the punching quality to its best. A dull punch or die will not only result in burrs on our parts, but will also increase the tonnage required to punch the material. High speed punching can cause excessive heat for the punch, which may soften the punch material. If this happens, the punch will wear much quicker than normal. Make sure tooling is always properly lubricated. Use air blow tooling if your machine is equipped with the air blow system. The air blow system will keep the tool lubricated continuously to provide a longer life. 
Maintain proper tool station alignment. A misaligned station will not only reduce the punching quality, but will also reduce tool life. Keep in mind that punching thicker material will cause faster wear. Also be aware that punches usually wear faster than dies, so you may need to grind punches more often than dies. To help avoid slug pulling, use air blow tooling or slug ejectors at the tip of the punches. Another method is using negative taper or SPS dies which help hold the slug in the die. That's it for this video on tooling. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below or email us directly at support.cncsoft.com. See you soon in the next video as we continue our punch programming course series. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a new video is released.